What's up you guys, it's Branson. It's been a long time, it's been like a month, and a lot of you guys have been wondering, where have I been? Did I go broke? What happened? I was actually gone working on a project that I can't quite discuss yet, but it's super exciting. I can't wait to show you guys. Anyway, today I'm finally back after a month off of poker, playing some two, three at the Lucky Lady. Um, it's a private game that you guys are all welcome to join. DGAF hosts it, has some other hosts sometimes. So let's go, hit that intro. Cheers. With the guy Branson, who has the Branson poker logs. <laughs> let's go, let's go. <laughs> Tell him he's got a lot of class and it's all low. In for $300 at the 2-3, and early on, I pick up the lucky snowman on the button. I open to $15, and both the small blind and big blind call. Three ways to a flop of 8-6 deuce top set right away. Action checks to me. I could definitely bet charging some draws, but it would be disastrous if both my opponents fold. So I go tricky. I check, give my opponents some rope, and the turn is a 6. So from top set to top boat... Can't really get any better than this. My opponents both check to me again, and I cannot check back twice. I have to start getting money in this pot. I bet $25, and interestingly, both the small blind and big blind call. River is a five, small blind checks, but the big blind leads for $100, and there's only one move with a hand as strong as mine. I'm all in for $230. Unfortunately, both my opponents fold, but still a nice pot to take down. For those of you wondering, I usually play 5-5-10, but I took a month off, so why not ease back in with a fun, casual 2-3? And at these games, there's actually free food, free drinks, good vibes, so I highly recommend it if you are looking for a place to play in LA. Anyway, back to poker. I get 6-7 of hearts in the cutoff. I open to $15, the button and small blind call, and we're three ways to a flop of Jack-3-4 Rainbow. Pretty dry board. I do have a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. I see bet $15 and both my opponents call. All right, looking to improve. The turn is the four of hearts giving me a flush draw. And now I continue betting. I put out $50. When I bet the flop against multiple opponents, then continue betting the turn against multiple opponents, I'm saying I have a pretty strong hand. A lot of times I'll have a strong jack or an overpair, maybe even a boat. Anyways, the button raver poker folds, small blind folds as well, and I take it down, great results, and even better, raver says he folded a jack, so we're looking good right now. All right, strap in. It's a PLO double board bomb pot. Four cards each, two boards, straight to the flop. I'm on the button and pick up 10, 7, 9, 4. First flop is 10, 5, 6. Second flop, 6, deuce, 8. And looking at this, I have just so many draws on both boards. Multiple straight draws, a flush draw. I'm, I'm, I'm all over it. Cutoff bets $15 into a pot of 30, and that's not enough for me with all my possibilities. I up it to $50. Well, early position and cutoff call, three ways to the turns, which comes a three and a five. That's right. I just turned the best possible hand on both boards. Even better, the early position player goes all in for $70 and the cutoff calls. Well, clearly they both like their hands, but I need to get all of the cutoff's money, so I raise to 200 I don't want to bet too much and have him fold, but it's a moot point as he goes all in for 450 total. I call, rivers are a king and a 10. I'm feeling good. I show my cards. The cutoff has a set on both boards. The early position player has the same straight as me on one of the boards, so I take three quarters of the main pot and all of the side pot, and it is a humongous win. We actually played a lot of PLO double board bomb pots, but they're quite messy, so I only wanted to show you guys one, and this one was the most significant one. Moving on, I pick up Ace Queen in the hijack. There's a $5 straddle under the gun opened to $20. I could get behind either raising or calling here, but this time I decided to just call. The straddle calls two, and we're three ways to a flop of King, Queen, Queen. We flop trips. Under the gun continues for $25, and my first thoughts are I'm ahead of hands like aces, ace king, king jack, queen jack, 
but I am losing to Pocket Kings and King Queen. If I were out of position, I would most likely raise to gain control of the betting lead, but in position, I don't mind to just call, see what happens on the turn. If he checks, I can always bet for value, so I just call. The straddle calls as well. Now we're three ways to a turn, which comes a jack. The under the gun bets again, this time $45, and I do not like this. Betting twice into multiple opponents is strong, and there are more possible full houses now, so I proceed with caution and just call. The straddle folds, and we're heads up to a river, which comes a nine. Now he slows down and checks, so I doubt he has a full house. Probably not a straight either. I'm putting him on a hand like aces, ace king, king jack. Anyway, I'm going for thin value. I place a small bet of $40. He thinks about it, then makes the call. I show my cards, but he shows king 10 for a straight. Bummer, but I still do like the small value bet on the river after he checks. Next up, I have pocket jacks under the gun. I open to $15, and only the button calls. Heads up to a flop of ace, three, six, two spades. I go for a C bet of $10, and the button raises to $45. Okay, so it's possible she could have spades, but my hand is really not going to get any better unless I hit a jack, so it's going to be hard to hang on. Additionally, in low stakes, aggression is typically synonymous with strength, so if you bet and get raised, just save yourself the heartache and get rid of your mediocre hands, I fold. And my opponent nicely flashes me the ace of clubs, telling me I made a good fold anyway. Moving on, I get king queen in the small blind. The cutoff opens to $20. He's been choosing larger sizes all day, so this isn't alarming. The button calls, and this is a pretty clear three bet spot for me. I make it $100. The cutoff folds, but the button, he looks like he's getting stubborn. He makes the call, and we're heads up to a flop of 336. I see bet $75. It should fold out a lot of his Broadway hands or suited connectors, but he quickly makes the call and the turn is a nine. After he calls the flop, I think he often has a low to mid pocket pair like deuces, fours, fives, sevens, eights. I'm ruling out big pocket pairs since he didn't three bet preflop. However, I very well could have a big pocket pair, tens through aces. So I'm repping those hands. I bet $200. Praying he folds. He thinks for a solid minute. Please, please, please fold. And he calls. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. Hopefully a king or a queen. Nope. Seven on the river. He only has like 150 left now. There's no way he's folding. So I give up. I check. He checks back and he wins with pocket deuces. Ah! I mean, I knew what he had. But he knew what I had too, so he wins. It's a slap in the ego getting called down by deuces, but you live, you learn, you get a better poker face apparently. But anyway, I get ace king in the small blind. Under the gun plus two limps, I raise to $20 and only the plus two player calls. Heads up to a flop of jack, jack six. I'm out of position. This isn't a flop that really favors me that much. So I just check. He checks and the turn is an eight. Well, when he checks back, I actually feel pretty good. I think I have a good chance of having the best hand. I bet $15 for value from a weaker ace or to charge a draw or deny equity. And he makes the call. All right, river is a nine. I don't love this river because a lot of those draws like nine, seven suited or nine, 10 suited just hit a pair. I only have ace high. I check looking for showdown. Luckily, he checks back. I show and he shows nine, seven of spades. So bummer, but at least I had a good read on the situation. Okay, king eight of clubs in the hijack. Something's got to go right, but honestly, it's important to note that even though I've lost a lot of these hands, I actually lost close to the minimum in these spots, which in poker, you're going to win, you're going to lose, but the key is to maximize the amount you win and minimize the amount when you lose. All right, so the low jack limps, I raised to $20, which is honestly a little loose, and the button and low jack call. Three ways to a flop of king, nine, five. I flop top pair, low jack checks. My top pair is not very good. I decide to act with caution, see what the button wants to do. I check and the button bets $95, an overbet. 
the low jack folds and i do have top pair but <laughs> why 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 is he betting over the size of the pot here in low stakes over bets are hardly ever bluffs so i don't know man i have this spooky feeling man i have this really spooky feeling He flips over aces, and again, I lose the minimum, so it feels pretty good. Next up, ace seven of hearts in the low jack. I opened to $15. The small blind and big blind call three ways to a flop of eight, six, deuce, two clubs. Action checks to me. I don't have anything, and I don't believe in bluffing that often multi-way. I check. Turn is an ace, and now I do have something. So when the action checks to me again, I bet $15 and only the small blind calls. The river is the four of clubs. I'll probably just check back if he checks to me, but he doesn't, he bets $45. And again, I just, I don't know. I <laughs> I feel like he has a flush or a straight or hit two pair on the river. I just don't think this lead is a bluff, so I fold. I don't know, do you guys think it was a good fold? I'll never know, but this this is the reality of poker sometimes. Sometimes good poker is knowing when you're beat and not just getting stubborn if things aren't happening for you. All right, a few more hands to turn this around. I pick up ace, queen, and the cutoff. I open to $15 and the small blind and big blind call. Three ways to a flop of queen, three, six, two spades. Action checks to me and I put out a bet of $15. Only the big blind calls. The turn is a jack putting a second flush draw on the board. He checks, and I'm going to go for another bet with my top pair. This time, sizing up, I bet $60. But now, he raises to $140. And, oh goodness, my mind is shouting at me that he has queen jack. But... Ace queen is not mediocre. I am still beating him if he's over playing king queen. I'm beating combo draws. All right, he only has $240 total, so I'm all in. He makes the call and we decide to run it twice. The rivers are a four and a seven. I show my cards and they are good and I scoop. Yes, yes. Last hand of the night, pocket jacks in the small blind. The cutoff limps and I bump it up to $20. Only the cutoff calls, heads up to a flop of ace four eight. A board I would likely see bet, but I'm out of position and I just had this weird feeling when I was looking at my opponent. I check and she says, all and I'm done with this. Somebody wants to play me, they're gonna have to go all in. I don't have to go all in. Every mother No, no, mm mm. <laughs> no, I'm not messing with you after that speech. I'm, I'm out, I fold. Uh, and she shows ace four off for two pairs, so good thing I folded, and after that I racked up and cashed out. So that was an easy going session. I was in for 300, out for 654 for a profit of 354. Uh, not a huge win or anything, but um, still happy to book it. It's nice to play with friends. Again, if you're ever wanting to play in the daytime in the LA area, definitely check out the private Lucky Lady Games hosted by DGAF. Big shout out to him. He is a friend of mine. So uh, I don't know. I just thought my first session back should be with friends. So yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.